if you take older people with dementia who have a hip fracture, between 20 and 30% of them will die from that within six months, six to 12 months. Okay, we haven't done the analysis for mortality data in our study, but hip fracture has such a devastating impact on people, we need to do everything we can to try and reduce incidence of it. And that includes appropriate prescribing, not just of these drugs, but other drugs as well. Other drugs cause it as well, potentially. And um, drugs for high blood pressure. Obviously they help people to fall or make people fall. Um, other sedatives, um, antipsychotics cause it as well. So we need to focus holistically on all drugs which can cause falls and therefore can cause fractures. How can we help people with dementia who are on meds get the best from them? So obviously if you or I, we go to the doctor um, and we're given a drug and suddenly there's a, an error with it or a mistake, we can identify that. If you've got cognitive impairment, how can you identify it? How can you say what side effects you're getting? How can you say if the drug you've been dispensed by the pharmacy changes from a pink to a blue one? Okay, you're not gonna be aware. So we, how can we support these older people on the drugs? Um, so that's my research, so I've got to be excited about it. Otherwise, if you're not excited about your own research, what can you be excited about? Not being wrong. Um, I guess the other thing which we're all looking for is more medicines, newer drugs. The drugs we've got have been available for 17 years. We need new drugs. Um, when they do come out, there will be a challenge how we use them appropriately in the, in the real world. But they will come, but they will take a time. So uh, we all will be excited to see some new treatments that come out. So we, we moved from the benzos to the Z drugs because we thought the Zs were safer. We don't, probably don't think they are safer now, really. I think the thing is, if you give someone a sedative, okay, to help them sleep, you're probably going to increase the risk of falls at some stage um, and probably the biggest risk is not when they first take it because they fall asleep though there can be a risk there but obviously in the morning when you get a hangover effect and they feel quite groggy really so probably most sedatives would cause it i mean people have looked at melatonin and that is sometimes used but i'm not sure how strong the evidence is for that really i think the, the key focus is for sleep problems in older people is non-medication things exercise, avoiding caffeine too late at night, healthy eating, um, send them to bed when they're, ti when they're tired, okay, sleep appropriately. Um, in care homes, often um, people go to bed at a certain time to make it easier for the care staff. Okay, so they're all put to bed at a certain hour, often quite early. So imagine, if you, all your life you've been going to bed at 11, 12 o'clock at night, suddenly you're going to bed 7, 8 o'clock at night. You're probably not going to sleep that well really, are you? Um, so I think it's about having person-centered care for sleep problems um, in care homes. And also things like exercise, as I said, um, avoiding caffeine, simple things like that.